Now typically with any installation, I always like to do an initial generation. So in our prompt here, I'm gonna do my usual cute and adorable raccoon wearing a suit and top hat, and I'll add Pixar style. We'll just leave all the default settings. Actually, the steps is 50. Let's do 30. Make sure you're running some sort of model, at least the Stable Diffusion 1.5 one. We won't bother with any negative prompts at this point. We'll just click on Invoke. We just want to make sure it generates an image so we know it's working properly. All right, not the best image in the world, but it produced an image. Everything looks great. Now, before we look at ControlNet, the LoRa's and all that stuff, for those of you that are familiar with Invoke AI, you're gonna see that it's more of a condensed user interface. So on the left here, we're going to go to the Model Manager. Click on that. On this section, you'll see all the models that are currently present. Now, if you don't have any models and this is your first time doing this, you can go to civitai.com, pick a model that you like. Let's say you want to download Realistic Vision, click on that, and then hover over the download button, right click it, click on copy link address, paste it under model location, and then click on add model. It'll say model added, or you can click on scan for models, and then I'm just gonna right click here and copy address as text. Then under scan for models, I'm gonna paste that location here, click on find models, and it's gonna show me all the models that I have in this folder. So I'm just gonna pick a couple here. We're gonna add Photon, Rev Animated, Dream Shaper 7. That's good enough for now. When we go into our model manager, we'll have a list of the models that are currently installed. And then we can go back to the main interface and just double check on the models here. Let's say we use Dream Shaper. Let's change this to 768. Run another one just so we can make sure again everything is working properly. And there you go, a much nicer image of a raccoon wearing a suit and a top hat. <laughs> and also for the embeddings or LoRa's, we can do the same thing we did if you're downloading it directly from Civitai. You just right click over the download button, copy link address. Under import models, simple, we just have to put the location here. Click on add model. Now if we go into the negative prompt box here, we click on this icon here. We can add our embedding. Let's head down to Laura here. And if we click on the drop down here, you see there's the Pyramid Laura Ghibli one that we just installed and the one that was included with Invoke AI. So if we click that, they made it a lot easier where now you can just use sliders to adjust the strength and weight of the Laura. But we'll leave it at 75. We're just gonna click on Invoke. And there's our image. What a big difference it makes even with this simple prompt by putting this negative embedding and using the Laura world of difference. Now I'm not going to go in depth on every little detail here. I'll definitely make some follow-up videos, but let's take a look at some of the new stuff. So scrolling down a bit here, we have our usual settings. I believe there's some added schedulers now. A lot of the DPM++ ones that I personally like which is great. And of course you have the traditional Oilers, Euler Ancestral, DPM2s. So that's all good and dandy. We have a section here for VAEs. I do have the standard one installed. We do have a ratio button here so you could automatically click on portrait, wide, square. Now just under the usual settings we have control net. We enable it by this toggle. Click on the plus button to add a control net. Now you can do multiple control nets. See how it added another one. So if you wanted to combine them, you can do that. I'm just gonna test one. Let's do open pose as an example. Click on this icon to upload the reference image. I'll leave everything on default and let's change this to 640 because that's the size of my reference image. And when we click on invoke, you see the raccoon now is going to be in that same pose. There you go. Now it did add quite a few more raccoons, but you get the point. One thing I wanted to point out that I found really cool, if you go under the settings here, the top right, there's a section here for favorite schedulers. So if we click on this here, let's say I pick DPM++ SDE Keras. Let's pick 2M Keras as well. I also love using Euler Ancestral. 
let's just pick those three, close this off. And now when we go into scheduler here, in the drop down, you'll notice there's a favorite section and they're all listed here at the top. So if there's like a handful of schedulers that you like to use, it would be a good idea to populate your favorites here. I really like that feature, that's very handy. Next, there's a couple things on the image gallery I wanted to point out. So you can unpin this here, and now you see the window collapses. You can simply click on this to bring it back up, and you simply click out of it so you have a bigger workspace here. That's really handy. Let's repin this. The other addition is under here, so if we click on the drop down, right now it says uncategorized just because it's the default setting. But if we click on the plus button, we can add board. You see here it says my board. We can double click on the name and let's say we call it raccoons. And basically what we can do is take these images, move them to that board. And they're kind of like file folders where I can move everything here. I could add another board. Let's say I'm going to do tigers or something. I don't know. <laughs> and it just keeps everything nice and tidy. Below, you're also going to see this section for assets. So if I click on that, well, actually, I got to click on the original board here. Click on assets. You see it has the image I used for control net. A very intuitive way to organize your images. Then you have the tool icon here. That's basically your gallery settings. You can make the thumbnail sizes smaller or bigger. There's an option to auto switch to new images and you can select your boards here. So if I made tigers automatic, all my prompts here now would go into this particular board. So I'm gonna generate an image here and you see it populates under my tiger board. Really cool. Couple other things I want to show you really quickly here. If we scroll down here and see dynamic prompts, we just have to enable that. I'm going to go deeper in another video on this, but as a quick demo, you can pretty much just get a variation of the same prompt using different characters, for example. So I have a raccoon and wolf here, and you see that I've structured it differently with curly brackets and a pipe in the middle. And what should happen, it should alternate between a raccoon and a wolf. Looking at the images, here's our raccoon and here's our wolf. And I'll be honest, it's not something that I do often, but I'm definitely going to experiment more with it. Seems really interesting. Next, let's go into setting. We're going to turn on show advanced options. Then we're going to scroll down just a bit here and you'll see enable nodes editor. Let's toggle that on. And you'll see on the left, there's a nodes editor. We'll get to that in a second. In our options here at the bottom, there's an advanced drop down, and here we have clip skip. Now, if you're familiar with clip skip, certain models do recommend to use this. This is now available in Invoke AI, which is great. Let's go into the nodes editor here. I already preloaded something here. I'm not going to go in depth here, but it's basically like comfy UI. I don't know if you're aware of comfy UI. You've been following all the other content creators covering it, but basically it's like going under the hood of stable diffusion and you're able to customize your setup any which way you want, whether it's image to image, control net, LoRa's, whatever the case may be. It just gives you a lot of flexibility and advanced options. But I'll be honest, I learned Comfy UI just a few weeks ago. I'm pretty comfortable with that. I'm pretty sure I can figure this one out. It's not that much different really, but I feel like it needs its own video as well. Now there you have it folks, a very simple walkthrough of Invoke AI 3.0. Let me know in the comments below if you use Invoke AI and what are your initial impressions of 3.0. Until next video my friends, I'll see you when I see you.